Welcome back to Plants Not Plastic. I'm Nikita and today I'm gonna show you how to make a super easy granola that is delicious, inexpensive, simple, healthy, whole foods, plant-based, low fat and oil free. Before coming up with this recipe and ever since switching to a whole food plant-based, low-fat, oil-free diet, um, granola has pretty much been something that I have avoided because it is high in fat, it's typically made with oil, and it usually has nuts and seeds. So it just wasn't something that I had ever really thought about having around. But this recipe has proved to me that granola without those things tastes great, is super easy to make, and has a really great texture. So it is probably something that I am going to have a batch of ready to go in my pantry from now on. And I'm just really excited to share it with you. Before we get started though, if you are not already subscribed and you like this video, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell so that you get notifications when I put out a new video. I release new content weekly, would love to have you stick around and appreciate your support. So here's everything you'll need to make this recipe. I'll also leave everything in the description box below along with a link to the blog post with a printable recipe card. Covering the base for this recipe first, you can make this granola by just using rolled oats which is also going to be your cheapest option, but in my search for an interesting mix of ingredients, I landed on oil-free cooked grain options. This includes things like puffed brown rice, puffed whole wheat, puffed quinoa, or other simple cereals like O's or corn or whole wheat flakes. I have really enjoyed adding this extra texture and interest to my granola, but since these aren't our only ingredients, you can just stick with the rolled oats because you're gonna have more texture in them that goes beyond just the grains that you use. And it'll also keep your cost down. As for the dried fruit, I would recommend including it, but you'll have to be careful to buy options that don't have any oil. And a lot of dried fruits actually do. Raisins are usually a safe bet because they typically won't have additional ingredients and sometimes won't even have preservatives. Where cranberries typically don't have oil but will have sugar to make them taste better. And I'm sure that with some poking around, you'll be able to find other dried fruit options that are made simply and are oil free. Well, I mentioned that I don't typically add nuts to the granola when I make it because I honestly don't think it needs it. You can add your favorite nuts or even coconut flakes to add even more texture and variety and a little bit of richness, but I would suggest adding them sparingly to keep this recipe low fat. And last, I do include two different types of sugar in this recipe, both of which I think are necessary to add sweetness and give you caramelization and a little bit of that stuck together texture. And the agave adds a little bit of necessary moisture, but you could opt for a more whole foods plant-based option like maple syrup or date paste, or you could even try to make this recipe without those to see if the natural sugar from the dried fruit and baked oats is enough. To make this granola, start by preheating your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you are literally just mixing everything together in a bowl before baking it. Start with your dry ingredients, the mix of base grains that you've chosen, your dried fruit, chopped nuts if you're using them, cinnamon, and the optional brown sugar and salt. Mix them well either with a spoon or even by popping a lid on your bowl and shaking it vigorously, making sure to break up any clumps of dried fruit, which you may have to do with your hands. Next, add your wet ingredients, water or plant milk, vanilla, and optional agave or maple syrup. Mix everything again with your spoon or shake it all together with a lid before grabbing a non-stick or lined baking sheet and spreading your mixture out evenly. Keep in mind that I'm making two batches here, um, so my baking sheet is gonna be much fuller than yours with just the single batch. All you have to do from here is bake it for 20 to 25 minutes, stirring your granola and laying it flat again every five to seven minutes or until the mixture has gone from being soggy and wet to dry, crispy, and browned, but not burnt. Once it's all cooked, it's ready to transfer to your storage containers to be enjoyed right away or kept around to snack on for as long as you'd like. As you can tell by me munching on this granola as I've been making it, I really love it. It's one of my recipes that quickly became a regular bake in my kitchen and now I've always got a jar of it in my pantry, which is why I made two batches of it while shooting this video. And next time I'm probably gonna make four because it lasts in the pantry for months, so it's nice to do in large batches and I've been eating it every day. I love throwing this on my morning oatmeal, which I eat like cereal with rolled oats, some of this granola, fresh fruit, a little extra brown sugar and salt, and a plant milk. But you could also eat it by itself as a grab and go snack. It's a great combination of chewy, crunchy, and sweet. And if you're trying to stick to a whole food plant-based diet, it is just one more recipe you can add to your collection. For how it stacks up against an alternative, you can check out the full nutrition label on the blog that links out to Chronometer. This recipe though is the same as all my others. When comparing it to a non-vegan or a processed vegan option without specialty items or animal products, it's gonna cost you less to make. 
With plant-based ingredients, it'll have more fiber and without oil or butter, you get to eat more of it for the same number of calories. So that's it for today's recipe. If you try it out, let me know in the comments. And if you've got a recipe idea, let me know that in the comments as well, or just say hi, I love to hear from you. And I would love to make something that you want me to make. You can also subscribe to my blog for recipes right to your inbox and connect with me on social media for day-to-day -day content. And don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, give this video a thumbs up and come back next time. Bye.